Let's talk trades in the AFL and our correspondent all year on the format has been Alex Kayafa. Alex, who's been the, uh, the biggest winner and uh, who's been the biggest loser, which used to be an old program yeah. on Channel 10. I think the biggest winner has been the Bulldogs. Um, they've managed to trade for a star midfielder in Trelaw, um, which, is, which is pretty big for them. It just adds to their you know, ever-growing midfield, which is, which is impressive for them. They've gathered a Ruckman now, which they've been searching for for so long in Stefan Martin from, from the Lions, which is going to help in a big way for, um, for Tim English, which is exactly like what, what I said, what they've been searching for. They've managed to keep Dunkley away from the Bombers, That's big move. Um, which is huge for them. And they've managed to gather enough draft picks to be able to uh, bid on their academy player, Jamara Hagen, which is you know consensus, consensus pick to be the number one pick in the draft. So he's looking like he's gonna be a Bulldogs player as well. So next best would it be St Kilda or Carlton? I th- I in think terms st- of wins? I-, I think St Kilda. Um, they've, they've managed to get you know Brad Crouch through the door for, for next to nothing, which has just added more to their midfield. And they've just gathered a few different pieces here and there, like Jack Higgins, that's just adding more to their forward speed, their you know, goal kicking ability. So um, they've, they've done really well, but, but you could put, definitely put Carlton um, easily pretty much right up there with them, you know, in getting Zach Williams, you know, as that sort of midfield guy to help out now with Cripps and Walsh and, and all those sort of guys. And, you know, they've picked up Adam Saad, you know, they got their two big targets that they wanted that they feel could really mm. um, help the team. So, um, yeah, you could definitely put them very much in the same conversation as well. All right, let's talk about uh, another subject that's been very much in the news and it's spin. And we're not talking about spin bowling, we're talking about the spin. The various clubs have come up and they've done all this talking, talking, talking has been very big. And the biggest of all those, of course, has been the Magpies. And they've had a reason to do that following their so-called fire sale. Um, I want to know why haven't we heard from Eddie Maguire? We've heard from Nathan Buckley and he's gone, well, it had to be done, had to be done, had to be done. Uh, But Eddie Maguire, who's notoriously big on telling everybody what's going on, even if it's not his club, um, has gone strangely missing, must have entered the uh, twilight zone. What what have you made of the last week or two, in fact, the last three weeks? Because this has been going almost for that long. Yeah, it has. It started off messy from the get-go just before the trade period started. And even while the trade period went on, it just, it felt like it got even messier. And not one word from from Eddie Maguire, and where, as you said, he's normally the first one to come out and say something. And it's a bit strange to hear him go silent for three weeks. And um, yeah, he came out yesterday saying that, you know, putting a spin on it, that it's the media that are just drilling into Collingwood because it's Collingwood and 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 all that sort of stuff. And yeah, it was it was a bit strange. Do you think someone should tell Eddie that he's been espousing for the better part of the last twenty years that Collingwood's the biggest club in the country? Yeah, it's the Manchester United of the AFL. Well, if that's the case, then he's got to be very much aware that he's got to be on the front foot. Yep. Can't go <clears throat> and say nothing. Yep. And uh, the club is reeling, still reeling, because the words of Adam Trelaw's wife have been ringing very loudly. She is absolutely livid with what the club has said and, they, and make, virtually making her the catalyst for this dumping of her husband who still had five years to go yeah. on his contract. And, uh, and, and it was a back-ended contract. So the young man has done the right thing by the club. The club hasn't done the right thing by him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's done, he's did, he did what he needed to to help Collingwood stay in that window, yep. um, which is what, you know, Eddie Maguire did and say that And this is how you too. get rewarded. Yeah, Eddie Maguire did say that too, that, you know, they back-ended a lot of the contracts because they thought they were in the window and, um, you know, to, to help keep them there. But... Unfortunately, it's come, it's come back to bite them a little bit and, um, you know, they've, they've lost a star midfielder now. They've lost another young, really promising young forward in Jaden Stevenson, who mm-hmm. that was another situation that got a bit messy too with, you know, him having to call Nathan Buckley, asking what's going on. And, you know, the, whole, the way the whole situation was just handled was just arguably one of the worst. Anything positive to come out of it? Will other clubs learn that you don't have big back-ended contracts because they could come back to bite you. Definitely. I think, I think all clubs will see what's happened to Collingwood this off-season and understand, okay, we've got to think, think, of, think around this a bit differently. And I think especially Collingwood are going to learn from this. Well, they need to learn from this because if they don't, it could just get even more nastier. All right, what's next? We've got the AFL draft 
on the on the seventh of December, which is which is looking pretty good. Again, it's a it's a tough draft to pick because um, we have we've had no NAB league and and all the juniors playing. So. And I asked you earlier who'd be the biggest winners and biggest losers of the trade period. And you said the Bulldogs. They may well be one of the biggest winners in the draft. Explain. Yep, yep they will because the guy who's consensus to go number one is Jamara Yugelhagen, and he's a Bulldogs Academy player. So the Bulldogs have been smart through the trade period too and have gathered enough picks so that if another club bids on them, doesn't matter even if it's at number one from Adelaide, they can say, yeah, no, nah, we're matching the bid and um, they, they're going to get their man one way or another. So that's really, it's really big for the Bulldogs and, and they've proved yet another big winner. Alex Kayafra, as you've seen, has kept us abreast of what's going on uh, through di three different stages. We've got the draft still to come and Alex promises he'll be back next week on the Informer to give us an idea about the market for the draft as the, they line up. And of course, he's already, already given us a huge hint that the Bulldogs are looking very, very good.